Hello, I'm Rick Tomasco. Buy the coin, not the holder. Uh, if there is one single piece of advice uh, I have been giving collectors uh, over the past almost three decades, above everything else, it's to buy the coin and not the holder. I've written six books on rare coins, and if there is one common thread in all my books, all highlight the importance of the quality of the coin in the holder over the importance of the grade on the holder. And yet I still see collectors, uh, most are probably new to collecting, who either you know, ignore this or are perhaps just not aware of how important it is. So if you are a new collector, or maybe an advanced collector who uh, would just like to learn a little bit more about this subject, this video is for you. Now, the subject of buying the coin and not the holder is too complex to fully cover in one short little video. So this may be part one of a multi-part series. Since their inception in the late 1980s, PCGS and NGC have been a tremendous aid to the collector, uh, offering independent third-party grading by expert numismatists that eliminated so much of the misrepresentation that had been taking place in, in the rare coin market prior and when it came to accurate, fair representation of a rare coin's quality. PCGS and NGC were created to eliminate the guesswork in coin grading, and for the most part, they have succeeded admirably. These services truly are, in my opinion, the greatest positive to take place in rare coin collecting in the past 100 years. But too often, collectors, especially collectors who are new to numismatics, make the serious mistake of assuming that because a coin is in a PCGS or NGC holder, it automatically means the coin in the holder is of the grade listed on the holder. Now to show you what I'm talking about, I've got three proof coins here. Two are Kennedy halves, 1964, and one is a Franklin, 1963. All three are graded proof 67. Franklin is also graded 67 cameo because the portrait has a frosted device, but they all have the same numeric proof 67 grade. Now a proof 67 grade, if you're new to numismatics, is a very, very high grade. An uncirculated proof coin is going to be graded anywhere on a scale from low of 60 to a high of 70. 70 represents perfection. And there are no, for example, Franklin's graded in 70. The highest possible grade any Franklin has received is a 69. Now also all these th three coins are a very high grade. That's a proof 67 grade. And we're going to show them to you and you're going to see that despite the fact that they're proof 67s, they all have a very, very, very different appearance. Now here's the three coins right here. Two are actually of the accented hair variety. Uh, the two 1964 Kennedys and the 1963 Franklin again, a proof 67 cameo. Now, this first coin here that I'm going to show you is an absolute beautiful jewel of a Proof 67. Now the PCGS price guide lists this coin at $100. Uh, I pay, actually paid $150 for it because it is truly a beautiful Proof 67 coin. But then we have this second example. And if you take a look at this, even though it's the same exact grade, there's serious spotting over the entire surface of the coin. And there's also similar spotting along the lower portion on the reverse. And yet it's the same proof 67 grade as that first coin. And then finally we have a 63 Franklin and proof 67 and you'll notice some spotting at around 9 o'clock along the left rim. Now if you were to take all three of those coins out of their holders and send them back into the grading service, just ungraded raw, I guarantee you they would not all come back proof 67 grade. The only one that would would be that first 64 Kennedy I showed you that I paid $150 for. These other two would come back much lower grade because of the spotting. So then you would ask, well, why are they in proof 67 holders? Well, that's because on rare occasions, uh, especially when it comes to post-World War II proof coins, if there's been any mishandling of that coin before it goes into encapsulation, what typically happens, that mishandling, for example, if I take 
Here's a 1963, uh, here's a Franklin half dollar. Beautiful deep mirror. If I would say just touch it lightly with my thumb, just like this, in the grading room, that fingerprint is not evident. And when they encapsulate it, it is not evident. But what happens over a period of months, sometimes even a year, uh, that fingerprint, the oil from that fingerprint, begins to react with the metal in the coin. And over time, a fingerprint develops on that coin. Same thing with spotting. There's some kind of um, foreign material that's on that coin that at the time of encapsulation is not visible. But over time, that foreign material chemically reacts with the coin and it begins to spot. And at that point, the coin becomes a much lower grade. This is very, very important if you're new to collecting. So uh, there, there is an interesting article I have on this subject that's posted on the PCGS website. It's titled, Why Franklin Half Dollars of the Same Date and Grade Are Often Valued Very Differently. Now you can take that word Franklin, pull it out of there, you could plug in any other coin, uh, and it, it, the article would apply equally to it. It could be why Morgan dollars of the same date and grade are often valued very differently. So you're going to uh, find it uh, hopefully very informative, and thank you for watching.